momentum built up now. I mean, after these two events, they're starting to make a name for themselves. They have season yeah. three coming up very soon. It's going to be very interesting to see what's going to happen. But we are finally in the picks and bans as we do see at least band out very quickly. And right off of that, we see Curse of Banning out Kazakhs. Yeah. Not unexpected, I'd say. <laughs> unexpected bans. Yeah, exactly what we saw before. Zed, it's the first time we've seen him come out of the tournament. I'll see the, uh, the last IEM was the Zed patch, but he was globally banned. So this is the first time we've seen a chance for him to replay Gambit. And uh, Zubra Blaze completely ignored him, just left it out of the picture. Now he's banned, but Citizen, why, why is he banned? Can you explain that to us? Zed? Yeah. Um, there are a lot of different very good strategies with him, and I think he's also very decent on many lanes, and uh, also in one 2 uh, What we've seen right now in Europe is a lot of Zeds on top lane, uh, especially with Makers is known for it. Uh, so I'm not quite sure why they do this ban, but maybe they've watched Curse and scouted them and saw some threats around Zed. Yeah, let me explain it. Of course, he's got that very high burst, his ultimate, just amplifying all the damage you do yeah. and popping it. But our bands are complete. Evelyn Twisted Fate, the last two from Curse, and there is that Olaf coming out of yeah. that, um, where exactly as you predicted. But again, as we mentioned, those champions that have not seen that ban option, the very strong champions, Katarina's there. And it's not quite selected yet by Cobb, but he's thinking about it. They might want it, and she does work very nicely alongside that movie. Yeah. It's uh, pretty similar to Misfortune in that aspect, uh, Katarina. It works uh, amazingly well with arm walls, and if you put another another couple of AOEs in it, it works perfectly. Yeah, I see. She's just gonna throw the bouncing blade around, use that sinister yeah. steel, take everyone down low. Everyone's gonna be locked in a move result. They're not gonna be able to cancel her own ultimate. She starts spinning, and then it's just shimpo after shimpo with the resets, mopping up all these low health champions that are left. And that's just two of the champions. Because they have three others to choose from. And it's down up to MYM. What do they go with? What do they do to shut her down? And obviously the other question, is it Rux in the mid lane? Or is that going to be Vogel in the top lane? They don't know yet. Um, I'm still surprised that Chad is still open. Uh, teams don't seem to value him too high in this tournament. Um, which uh, isn't really consistent with what I've seen from Korea and other tournaments. So I, I guess Peter Makers should probably pick him up. Okay, you're a bit of a mid lane, a little bit different, but Janna, she's been coming back in at the moment through a lot of support players. Janna? Yeah, through solo queue more than so much tournaments, but she would work very nicely against both Amu and Katarina in a combo. Amu comes in with a bandage toss, you immediately knock him straight back out again with that ultimate. And she's going to work okay with Misfortune down in the bottom lane. They have picked up the Zyra, so there's a possibility that's the support yeah. now, but which would be your preference? Um, I think Jenna is quite quite new again to the European supports. Uh, we've just started picking her up again. And it's always, like in these situations, in front of such a crowd, you always want to pick something you're comfortable with. And I, I guess if Peter Makers didn't practice her, they won't go for it long. Well, the thing is you have to remember is that Libic is a very good Zyra player. We saw in Section Master Singapore, he did an amazing job. He had more kills than his AD carry, actually. One. Yeah. He was like 4 0 and 3. So he's playing something he's kind of comfortable with. The Wukong, though, is actually kind of throwing me off. Um, we did see a bit of Wukong when it was Fnatic versus SK Telecom. Um, when Reaper is actually running Wukong mid, and I know Fnatic's actually been preparing for that. I know they've been pricing it quite a bit, but we do see that Ezreal and that uh, Lulu locked in. What's your thoughts on that? Um, no thoughts. It's a solid bot lane, like nothing special there. Uh, I think the, like Wukong will be way more interesting if he's sent top or mid, and I guess it's probably probably mid lane Ooh. usually. Makati swapping from that K the last pick. I mean, K Charu had it to start with. Charu, if he picked it himself. Argue you're going to take it mid, fine. Yeah. But they specifically took it off of him, and Makati's now hovering on himself. So, why would Makati pick it from Charu? I don't think that KO's going mid. That KO's either going top or he's going jungle, which is something we actually saw I'm so fresh from Millennium do quite a couple of times. So, it's very, very viable. We've seen some very impressive scores from him with that champion. If I'm not mistaken, I was talking to uh, Fury from Modern like Esports, Virtual Esports, Little Young, to participate, but Charu's been practicing Jace mid. So yeah. we could actually see that Jace go middle, we could see the Wukong we go could. top. And Kale Jungle, I mean, he's really strong. He is. Or sorry, she, I guess, <laughs> if you want to say it uh, the right way. You um, look at the uh, AoE damage on that too. You've got the um, the poke coming out from uh, Jace, taking everyone down low, very big AoE on that. You've oh. then got a Zyra ultimate comes in, huge AoE damage and a knockup. And to keep them on that while the knockup channels, you've got Wukong spinning around, yeah. knocking everyone up again. So it's a double knockup. And Wukong's ultimate is one of the highest damage abilities in the game. And if you can keep everyone inside that for its full duration, that's a lot of hurt. 
So that's a very strong combo, just those three. And then you've got Misfortune Ultimate over the top of it with a Black Cleaver, as I'm sure we'll see her go with reducing the armor. It's a physical damage ultimate from Wukong. She's going to shred their way through this curse line. Yeah, we, see, of, we see a pretty different approach here. Other teams usually try to uh, counter Amumu by having some knockbacks like Ragas and Janna. But what they are trying to do is kind of inside of Amumu or kill the enemy team by having Wukong as like a barrier and Misfortune in the back firing through it. And uh, they can still protect somebody with Kale, so I really like, like the idea. And uh, if they execute it well, they have a definite advantage. Yeah, it's no longer Curse of the Sad Bolt Time, now it's like Knock of a Bolt Time or something like that. Because you know, you hold them there in place long enough with those knock ups that your ultimates are yeah. going to fold channel. Um, and the thing is, is that Curse, they don't really have anyone to jump to. Yeah, Katarina can kind of get there, but it's going to have a hard time unless you build that Warbog, yeah. which I mean, we expect everybody to kind of go for. And we do see Ziggs, which rucks. I mean, how often do we see Ziggs middle? Seen it like I think once since Christmas. Seen it one guy play it. it. Didn't do too bad. It wasn't particularly amazing, but I mean, Citizen, you're I mean, I'm player. a big fan of it. It's, it used to be my main. <laughs> you look really excited champ. right now. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I played it in OGN Korea, and it's one of my favorite champs. Um, but in this situation, I don't like it. Uh, they have too much tunnel, and uh, against Wukong, I don't see how he should even survive mid lane. And the thing is, they need, you know, they, they have Katarina, yeah, you know, they can do the ultimate the entire time, they move the ulti, but you kind of need someone to do damage as well to get those uh, resets I would, off. I would much rather see uh, some mobile champ or Kartos, maybe. But Ziggs is, is way too uh, volatile. Like, if he gets tunneled, <laughs> and uh, I mean, anything of the enemy team can kill Ziggs if they get to him. Well, you also so, can't have to keep in mind his ultimate. I mean, he could easily yeah, hit top lane or bot lane with it, depending on what kind of yeah. happens. The ult isn't really that effective for Ziggs. <laughs> All right, well, we do have uh, teams actually loading in. So, guys, early game. Actually, well, not, not even early game. Who do you guys have taking this, just based on picks? Uh, I give it to Media Makers pretty, pretty clearly. Yeah, that Media Makers combo, if they get that off, everything on top of each other, perfect combo. KL Ultimate down onto Misfortune. Curse is going to have a lot of trouble dealing with it. But same thing as we saw before. While that's a very strong combo, could be picked apart. Yep, we're going to go to our lovely... Okay. As I hear the word audio on our set, we're going to go to Love the Castles, though, and... Uh, the yeah. Makers here at the Intel Extreme Masters in Katowice. Joining me for this one is Jack. Jack, what are your thoughts? Interesting lineups. Well, we heard from the guys that they were a little bit surprised with the Wukong pick and the Jungle Kale especially. That's the most interesting thing I've seen. There were actually 80 unique champions played throughout the OGN winner, and Wukong was not in that bunch. So this is definitely something new we're going to see from MYM, the local Polish team. And we can never underestimate... I mean, it's a little bit of a different situation. I was going to talk about the crowd, but they're unfortunately playing off stage uh, in, uh, in the players' area right now. But mm -hmm. uh, this crowd could certainly get them uh, fired up and going for things. I think if this crowd cheered loud enough, they could probably still hear them uh, over in the back area where they're going. Anyway, so uh, in terms of the early game, what are you expecting to see here, Jack? Well, from the looks of it, they're both just doing defensive formations. I'd say Curse is probably the favorite coming into this game, so it makes sense for them to be defensive. And then MYM took enough risks with their picks, to be honest. They're not really going to do anything crazy level one. Well, Meet Your Maker's just waiting off by their red buff. Currently, we've got Misfortune down in that bottom tribus. Jace up at the top. A couple of wards down, defensive wards, really, from Meet Your Maker's on this top side. The wards from Curse are uh, pretty much that whole line set up there, uh, as we talked about earlier. Curse are going to be starting off here as well by the Wolves. And we're trying to make sense of the lanes, actually, right here, because we expected a mid-Jace from the champion select, but Kuban of MYM is actually waiting up top, looking like he's going to be in a 1v2 with himself, and interrupted myself here, delayed invade, but they're walking through a cursed ward. Yeah, through that ward, and that's why you just see the importance of those wards uh, at this early stage, but will it be enough to stop, or will they be able to stop Meteor Makers from taking away this blue buff? Will that force them then to move around on towards the Meteor Makers blue buff? It certainly looks that way it's going to go down. They're just going to trade blue buffs straight up. Meteor Makers got it for Jungle Kale, but then since there's only a 1v2 top lane, St. Fishes, as soon as they saw the four on the ward, ran straight for MYM's blue buff. So it's really just a slight advantage for MYM, but really not much gain. Yeah, and we saw that blue buff going over on towards Amumu. Uh, we do have that bit of a lane switch going on there. We uh, have Voiboy in this bottom lane. Uh, what do you fancy his chances there with Katarina against this uh, AD carry support in the bottom? It's really funny because so many teams refuse to 1v1 against Voiboy just because he's such a powerful laner. But Curses themselves have put them in this situation where he has to 1v2 bottom lane. He usually just sits back, farms for a little while, and then he waits for St. Fish's ganks. I think he's going to be okay in this situation. 
Zyra MF is an extremely strong lane, but I feel like the skill of Boy Boy is going to carry him through. Kubo on there, already taking some good damage in this top lane. Always hard to be uh, against that Lulu with a slow, which uh, I always like to more call a snare. That's how ridiculously strong that is coming out of Lulu. Uh, could face some hard times in there. One lane that we didn't really touch on too much, this middle lane, Ziggs versus Wukong. It's not one that we have really statistically to back up, I think, uh, in terms of how we analyze it, Jack. This is not something we see very often. I mean, way back. Oh, in sorry the to interrupt. Down in the bottom lane, we have got this gang coming down. Voiway in all kinds of trouble, and that will be first blood now, Jack. We saw that time and time again at IPL. Why is it still happening? Should have seen that coming, in all honesty. It was because the delayed invades threw off Curse's early ward placement. They just didn't actually see Bokati sneak in from the back. And it looks like Voiboy just got caught sleeping. Once he came around the back, he knew he was dead 100%. He didn't even burn flash. But taking this turret is actually going to be really huge for MYM. Yeah, that's already going to be falling down here very quickly. They'll take it with this push that they've got going on there. And that means Katarina coming back with no turret in behind him. And that is a great start for the Poles here on home soil here in, Kat in Katowice. Yeah. So scratch what I said earlier about Boy Boy being able to handle that lane because <laughs> he's been demolished in about four minutes. It's going to be really tough for him to come back from this one. So what do they do to change this thing around now? Does he have to go into this top lane and go up against Kubon? I think what Curse has to do is they need to try to get their tower killed as soon as possible. But you can see MOM's already trying to counter that by sending MF and Zyra up top as well. If they could trade turrets, it would be okay, but I just don't think they're going to be able to do that. Well, they've started that damage coming in now onto this turret. Obviously, the uh, poke coming out of that Jace Q with the acceleration gate as well will force Curse to uh, back away somewhat. We'll see if any action comes in once that AD carry and support do come into this top lane, which Curse, in all right, should be ready to expect. Once the turret goes down, you always see the AD Karen support swap over. Curse will not be surprised by this, but if they get any kind of snare, they might be able to jump on him. Let's see. Yeah, we see the flashes coming in there. Cop maybe coming under focus. Actually, uh, Kubon just getting slow there, but Cop is taking a lot of damage. The ignite running onto him, but he will stay safe. So only that one kill up till now, of course, in favor of Meet Your Makers. Let's take a quick look at the uh, early CS there. The 280 carries 27 to 29. That is pretty much bang even. Middle lane also is very, very even. But as we go along, is that going to become more and more difficult for Rooks in this middle with Ziggs? I think he's going to be okay based on the matchup. I mainly think Saru is going to be looking to roam with that Wukong mid. Try to make plays happen elsewhere because engaging onto Rux is just a little too difficult. He's going to be saving his E that entire time and just hopping away if Wukong tries to engage. And we see those three men coming in. Doing good damage onto this top turret. Ezreal and Lulu are coming back into that lane. In the meanwhile, Voivoy has finally got his chance to do a bit of farming in this bottom lane. He uh, is actually ahead of what Jace currently has at 22 to 18, but Jace is now going to be going down into that solo lane as well. So uh, things evening out somewhat now. Where's the next big play going to come out, do you think, from either of these teams, Jack? I don't know if we're going to see another big play for a little bit here. Voivoy shoved out that lane so far, he knows he's going to have to get out of bot lane almost immediately. Maybe top lane, but probably not just because that matchup both has a lot of range, a lot of poke. Makati, though, invading St. Vicious, we could see something right here. Yeah, he's going to push in on the pressure here, but he needs to be careful. Zig's coming across here to cover, and that will mean Makata forced away. Lulu has come down, and we can see Wukong going to actually ultimate in here onto Elements. He is going to get exhausted. The root not quite landing, but he should have the damage here, Jaru. Elements is going to go down, and that is the danger. Getting caught out there in the jungle. You mentioned that Charu is going to go wandering. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, I think I missed it, but Elements was down a flash before that happened, so Saru really knew that he was going to try to roam up top. Just incredible pressure by Makatu into St. Fish's jungle, really making that jungle kill work early. Great stuff from Meet Your Makers. They're 1,400 gold ahead, 2-0 to zero in kills, and of course they took that first turret down of the game as mm. well. And top lane, well, that can become be a diving. bit more standard. Are they going to go for it? Yeah, that's the question with Kale on those golems at the top. And actually, the root has landed here on towards Cop. He will arcane shift away, but has he got the speed? Oh, the flash, there it comes out, but he is going to get taken down. There's another. So the home team, MYM, really coming out hard for Curse. I mean, we know that Curse is without their mi main mid player, Nijaki. Rux had been practicing it coming into this event. Curse had just qualified for Season 3 in North America. Maybe they're just coming into this event a little sloppy because MYM is crushing them right now. 
And we heard um, thoughts a little bit from Citizen Wayne in terms of traveling. You've done it yourself multiple times back in the day. Um, back in the day, it wasn't really that long back ago. Back in my but day. <laughs> back in your day, at least. Um, but does it have an effect? I mean, meet your makers, they're from Poland, they've come here to Katowice, that's not far. Um, how is that coming from the West Coast like Curse? It depends actually whether they got in yesterday or the day before because many people were getting diverted from the Katowice airport and actually had to shuttle or take a bus two hours to get in. It's really tough for North American teams to make this trip. Maybe they're a little bit jet lagged. Well, currently, Meet Your Makers are showing the uh, solid play that we saw out of them from Intel Extreme Masters in Singapore, from Intel Extreme Masters Cologne, where, of course, they picked up second place as well, yeah. losing out there to uh, SK Telecom. So, you know, first place to second place, I guess the numbers would dictate a third place here in Katowice, but in front of a home crowd, they are still looking very strong. And if what I've heard is correct, they've been practicing hardcore, especially you know, for this event, but maybe even more importantly, going forward into those season three U uh, European qualifiers. And when you bring up those past results, MOM's actually done amazingly well in IAMs. And as far as European competition goes recently, that's all they've really had access to. They weren't a part of the season two regionals. And since then, they've really kind of been dominating. So maybe this early response by them beating up Curse 3-0 with a 2,200 gold lead isn't that big of a surprise, or shouldn't be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been talking about Meet Your Makers and their past results. Their first big one was way back in 2010. It feels like forever by now, where they finished second um, in the World Cyber Games. Was it event, the same which you team actually back then played as well? That. It was the same team outside of their top laner, Kubon, actually uh, coming out. That was uh, Kikis who played top lane for them. There. Wow. Well, that's a team that's been together for quite a while, and maybe they're just gelling now. This will be a great warm-up for them going into Season 3 qualifiers next weekend. Oh. Who's going low there? It's actually down in the bottom here. Makata getting ganked oh. out actually from St. Vicious uh, and Voivoi. We are going to see the teleport coming down. There's the ulti coming out of Charu as well. Voivoi could well be in trouble from this one. Kubon comes in around the side. That Q through the acceleration gate, stealing the kill away. But it's a kill secured nonetheless. And here is St. Vicious just wanting to die to that tower. Meanwhile, in the middle, they got that action coming in. St. Vicious will go down to the tower. But that leaves Meet Your Makers at 5 1 now. They've got their AD carry and support in this mid lane. And the big thing is going to be if they can shove down this turret before Curse can respawn. If they can get that three turret advantage, even if Curse is able to take this top one, getting the three outer turrets down this early gives you incredible map control. 10 minutes in, 15,500 gold to 13,000 gold. So that lead certainly substantial at this point. But there is the first turret of this game in favor of Curse. But Meet Your Makers are still pressuring you. And there's no immediate response, actually, from Curse in terms of this middle outer turret. Yeah, they almost seem a little bit lost. Everyone got, I mean, St. Fish executed himself, Boy Boy died, and no one was able to rotate and cover mid. I almost feel like Cop and Elements should have rotated down to help that turret, but because they didn't, it cost them three. And that will put the gold lead up to 16, let's call it 17,000 to 14,500 for now. Charu just coming back down into this bottom lane. Uh, they've actually left middle there. Ziggs and Amumu between them probably won't be able to do too much damage on that one, but Voiboy is getting ready here. He's going to go out on towards Charu, but can he really go up against him? He's a level behind on this one. We can see Charu there just not able to uh, keep up with him after uh, that W is put down. Yeah, we know Voiboy popularized the Warmogs Katarina very recently. It looks like he's going for a Sunfire Cape this game to try to match up better with the huge amount of physical damage that's going to be coming out of MIM. But even with the Chain Vest and Giant's Belt, he's nowhere close to being able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sharu's Wukong, who just has a Brutalizer at this point. And it looks like, from Meet Your Maker's point of view, a dragon may just be in order. There was a ward here down on this corner from Curse, but you can see the wards for Meet Your Makers are brilliant as well. They've got vision right up in towards that blue buff. They have the, you know, they've got the sight of Curse now if they wanted to start this off. And they seem like they would want to fight. They've gotten all the turrets down, so if they fight, Curse has no way to fall back. Here we go, Charu going to ulti right into the middle. Lulu ulti put down on herself, but the bullet time comes across. Zyra ultimate in there as well. That's two kills coming down instantly. And I don't think they're finished just now. Cop could be in trouble. He needs to get himself away as quickly as possible. Arcane Shift not going to be up in time. And that is three kills for zero in favor of the poles of Meteor Makers. They already had the big advantage, and Curse just cornered themselves. That was a great initiation by Saru's Wukong, and they just wiped everyone of Curse out. They're going to get the dragon on top of this, and they have a stranglehold on this early. And this is the Meet Your Makers that we saw through the group stage at Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. They 
seemingly dominated everyone in that tournament when it was when we were talking about the group stage. And mm -hmm. this is a fantastic start from. We know that they're a team that plays very well under pressure, under momentum, which is quite strange considering that they're a team which everyone considers underdogs. But as we've said, their past results would say that they're definitely not an underdog team in any of these games. And the biggest thing they're going to have to keep track of in this match, at least, is that they have all physical damage damage dealers, no AP, so everyone on Curse is going to be trying to stack armor, that's why I see the Sunfire Cape on Boy Boy, the early Chain Vest on St. Vicious, but if they keep this up and get an early Black Cleaver, I don't think it's going to be a problem for them. Well, we can certainly see that coming out. Misfortune already got the workings there, the Brutalizer, in fact, that would be the third Brutalizer coming down for uh, Meet Your Makers at this point of the game, so certainly uh, feeling that they know what Curse are going to throw their way to try and, to, uh, try and counter this composition that they've got going. Let's take another uh, rain check here on what's exactly going down with the grand scheme of things. Eight warning kills with 13 and a half minutes in there, three warning turrets, there's about 22,000 gold give or take to 17,000. It's a very solid foundation uh, in this first 15 minutes or so of the game. And having a 4,000, 4,500 gold disadvantage, like you said, of 14 minutes is really, really oh. far behind. Boy, boy, here could be in a little bit of trouble, actually. Just did get rooted up, but Meet Your Makers a lot more concerned with making sure that they could take away that red buff, which you know, something that we saw Azubu Blaze doing to perfection in that last game. It mm -hmm. is important and can't be underestimated. This is just total control by MYM. Boy Boy knew exactly where they were going there. No one on Curse could respond. You can see there's actually five MYM wards in Curse's jungle. Three of them are pink wards, so Curse can't even out ward their own jungle because the wards would just get killed afterwards. They know where absolutely everyone is. They killed the first three turrets. They've moved their ward line into Curse's territory, and they're just going to continue to put the pressure on. Honestly, Baron's up in 15 seconds. They might look to start controlling something like that early because they have so much control. Yeah, I just uh, switched the Fog of War for you guys at home there and here in the audience. Have a look at the minimap. And, well, it tells a big story, to say the least, I think, from that one. Uh, Wukong here may be in a little bit of trouble if he's not careful. Uh, actually, will get caught out here somewhat. He's got elements really low, and this is something that Panky touched on. The damage is insane. Can he finish it off, though? No, not quite. And Charum now, maybe the one in trouble. Acceleration gate is down. Wow. That will save his life. Here comes the bomb from Rook, but that's not going to be enough either. Now Makata, the one in a little bit of trouble, will go down, but the Zyra ulti will knock him come. There is bullet time. Rooks will be Forced to flash over the top of the wall, and that will be a one for one. Very low HP across the board there. You can see three from Curse flashing red. Mackler not finished just yet, though. He gets the kill onto a Moo Moo. Actually, uses cleanse there to get out of that stun underneath the tower, and that's another fantastic win. Sorry, actually got Kale altered as the Ziggs alt bomb hit him, and he was only alive that long because the Hexdrinker shield kept him there. So the fact that he got that alive out of that situation live was incredible. Two for one, not the best. He shouldn't have been caught in that position, but the recovery was quite impressive. And that leaves us at 10 2 in kills, and we're around about a 5,000 gold lead for Meet Your Makers. Once again, we see that damage coming out of the queue. Elements being forced uh, a little bit low. It looks like the rest of Meet Your Makers here are going to be quite happy to split off into their individual lanes pick up as much uh, CS as they can whilst doing that. Wukong in the top element still wandering around pretty low on health, but he wants to get that vision back. That's something that uh, we, we already touched on before, that Curse have been lacking a little bit. And he still, without the Ruby Sightstone, isn't going to be granting that much vision. St. Vicious only has the one ward as well. Everyone's trying to pitch in, but it's so hard to regain vision once you've lost those first three towers, especially if you're not strong enough to retaliate if you have someone invading into your jungle. And right now, Curse is in both of those situations. I see Makata there just taking away the wolves where he can. Wukong moving his way through. He's actually stepped over a ward there. So Charu, you know, he has to be careful. But at the end of the day, he's Wukong as well. We saw how he could uh, get away from that fight earlier on. And once that ultimate comes into play, it can turn things very, very quickly, especially when, you know, the Zyra ulti comes down on top. Then the bullet time as well. And those fights can switch in an instant. And right now, we can see MOM trying the five-man siege up mid. They have such a big lead, they're really trying to force Curse on. They got about half the turret on that last push, but that was when Curse only had three members there. I don't expect Curse to just let this turret fall. They're going to try really hard to hold this. 
if Curse is to fight, they'd want to fight here with a really good Saint Fish Assault, but it's going to be really tricky for them to do anything because they're so far behind. Now there's another good queue coming over the top of the wall from Jace. Oh, meet you, Makers. Still trying to push in there. That's a nice ward put down from Curse just to try and give him that vision, but, well, it's Jace. The range on that queue is going to be catching them out time and time again. And just wondering if they can really hold up to that, uh, the way things that are going as well. There is another one coming out from Kubon. This time they dodge it with that uh, vision that was granted as Charu actually went over the top there in towards Elements. Use his ghost to try and get away. There is the bandage toss coming in, but Charu just going to decoy. There is the ulti. He's in a great position as well. Bullet time comes across. So Fishers is going to go down from this. This one, the uh, ultimate out of Kale, not enough to save him. Cop is very, very low as well, but they're just about gonna survive with so little health from that one. You see Cop and Voivo on the right hand side of your screen, very low. There's the inhibitor, sorry, and most probably this inhibitor as well. I love that initiation. The spinning Wukong with a Kale alt on top of him devastated Curse entirely. They threw everything on Asari trying to get rid of that giant monkey, and they just couldn't do it. They got destroyed again, that first inhibitor at 18 minutes. They're in so much trouble right now. What do they need to do, Jack? I mean, I, that's a bit of an open-ended question, obviously, uh, in a game like this, but you look down the scores, 2-0-4 with Jace. Mm -hmm. um, you've got Wukong, 1-0-4, Miss Fortune, 4-0-5. That is, uh, that's a lot of gold right now. 2,650 gold that um, is actually currently sat on their Mackler. And Voivo has actually come down here towards Dragon. They're not super healthy, not got a load of mana, and they're simply gonna back away. In all honesty, this is panic mode for Curse right now. They need to hope MIM makes a huge mistake or Curse needs to take some dumb risks, so to speak. Like, they would need to rush a Baron or rush into that dragon fight and hope to catch people low. If they are not going to do those things, they have to turtle better than they've been turtling so far. But with how the last fight turned on, they don't really have an answer for the spinning Wukong with the Kale Alt. They can't diversify their damage enough. Voiboy can't even get to the back line of MIM. So really, it's looking a little hopeless for them right now. And we've just seen second Black Cleaver being picked up here by Misfortune. There is the teleport actually coming out of Charu to save this outer turret on the bottom. And you now Curse have only managed that one single turret so far. And that was in the top lane where, you know, in terms of that two for one, uh, two versus one at the start, Meet Your Makers won that hands down, no question whatsoever. And you can, I guess, really put it down to that gank early on through the tribush, which, as we said, I think about 4,000 times at IPL when mm -hmm. it kept happening game after game after game. You've got to expect that in that kind of setup. It caught Curse by surprise, and especially when they're the ones with the Lulu Ezreal, that's almost your prototypical 2v1 push and kill the tower. The fact that they lost their turret first in that setup really put them for a loop. But aside from that, that was completely independent of the jungle invade that happened early with Kale and Wukong, where they were able to get the kill again onto Elements. So it's really not just that thing in the bottom lane. Every lane has been working quite well for MYN thus far. Solid performance. I've uh, mm -hmm. used that already in the last game with uh, Azubu Blaze. That was a more than solid performance yeah. <laughs> last game. Well, Meet Your Makers are certainly uh, looking like an informed team again. As we see them coming into, uh, well, their third Intel Extreme Masters event in a row. They finished first in Singapore, second in Cologne. We'll see what they can do here in Katowice. Still a long way to go in this group stage, whichever way you look at it. But they are now pushing in on towards this inhibitor turret. You can see they're almost half HP of COP taken away by a one single JSQ. They are looking so, so strong, especially considering with the double black cleaver, Wukong alt or MF alt, they're going to be shredding that 25% of everyone's armor pretty much the instant they initiate. And there's not even that much armor to shred, to be honest, on Curse right now. So if they can get a team fight of any kind, that is MIM, they're going to take it here. Kuvon just losing a lot of health, but Voivo could be in trouble. He's got the Lulu ultimate on him, but the bullet time ripping through him. Here comes Charu in there as well. Wow. And that is Makla unstoppable. Charu is going to finish off Rooks. Ultimate was put down there by Ziggs, but that is going to be four kills swept underneath. Four meet your makers. That inhibitor turret is going to go down. The inhibitor as well. And, well, 17 seconds. They could uh, do a lot of damage to the Nexus they turret They might just here. go for ending because they just killed four. It's 22 minutes in. Curse may as well throw in the towel at this point if the turrets aren't even down because they got completely obliterated by MYM there. 15 to 2. The Nexus being focused down right now. And meet your makers on home wow. soil here at Intel Extreme Masters. Katowice are going to sweep Curse aside in their first group stage. Brilliant, brilliant play, and something that is going to make their fans certainly happy here, being the home team in Group A. 
I mean, we know that Curse didn't have their full starting roster, but the fact that they came off so much practice from the North American Regionals, replaced Nijaki with Rux, and then just yeah. got stomped on by MYM, that's impressive play. So now it's looking like Azubu Blaze and MYM are the strong favorites in this group. Yeah, I mean, we still can't count Gambi out there. Uh, the fact it's that true. they were playing against, uh, yeah. what did we say, super, super solid Azubu Blaze uh, in their first game of the day. I mean, Gambit versus Meet Your Makers surely will be an amazing game. Meet Your Makers versus Azubu Blaze. Uh, Cursor, you know, along with Gambit as well, they've got a lot to prove right now. As you true. said, not their full lineup 